Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are from the upcoming Cedar Rapids Independent Film Festival. Eric Frazee. Eric, nice to see you. Good to, good to be here. And a familiar voice on KCCK under his radio num de guerre as Scott the Amazing Chris Man. It's Scott Chrisman. Hello. Nice to have you both here. Thanks for having us. Uh, so this is more, you've been at this more than 20 years. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And uh, so before we talk specifically about... You know, about this year's fest, what's changed since the early days? Uh, other than more gray, other than gray yeah. hair on the oh, part of the directors. Oh, yeah, there's plenty yeah. of that. Uh, the medium has really evolved. Um, and we came on at a time when it became much easier for your average person to make a film just because the tools came down in cost and it was easier to, to accomplish. And that's only gotten easier still. Uh, that time you're talking uh, VHS tapes and mini DV type <laughs> things. So long ago, uh, now you whip out your phone, and you can make something very quickly on a, a, a decent level, probably at least at that level. Oh, at uh, least. Now. So, so, yeah, it's become uh, democratized a lot more. Many many more voices are, are accessible. And now. the kind of the, I don't want to put this, the the line of demarcation between long, short, long film and short film in terms of what people will see. I mean, you know, back in the day, a short film, a film fest is the only place you could see it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. now there's much wider distribution for films of all lengths, yeah? Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you, various streaming services, you, you'll you find short films all over all over those types of things. But you still, uh, you know, you still like to go to a festival. You'll still like to see those films in a theatrical setting with an audience. Um, you know, it's, it's an experience that you don't have sitting in front of your iPad or, <laughs> right. or, or your television in your living room. Yeah. Uh, well, and a chance uh, many times to interact with the producers and directors of the films too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, that's something we do is a, a Q&A after each, after each film so that uh, the audience can, can interact with that filmmaker, find out you know, their motivations, you know, l- hear stories about the, the production and things like that. And it's fun for both the audience and the filmmaker. Uh, what's the been, oh? Go ahead. It's been curated a little bit too. Sure. So you got don't have just the vast sea of YouTube. You've got things that people say, hey, you should see this, and it should be viewed in this sort of context. And and with an audience, certainly adds a lot to it as well. How many films in the festival this year? Fifty-seven. Wow. Fortunately, not all feature length. No, no. no. <laughs> we have uh, we have uh, um, let's see, we have six features, uh, narrative features, thirty-one narrative shorts. Uh, 15 documentaries from two minutes to two hours in length, uh, you know, 20 professional film films, 18 hobbyist pro am films, and uh, and 19 student films. So uh, it's a good uh, good mix. Wow, and that and you are gonna make this all happen over what about two and a half days, right? Yep. Ish? Yeah. 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 That's and, and each film gets uh, screened twice. Wow. Okay. All right. So you pretty much take over the entire uh, uh, Collins Road Theater complex. I'm guessing. We uh, we do in the on the Saturday morning we get yeah. five all five screens and then we're on two screens the remainder of the of the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's jam packed, but uh, you know you have an opportunity to see most of the films. Uh, so well, you know, at, at the risk of you know cherry picking out you know a particular film, I'm going to ask you to cherry pick out a particular film. You know, maybe out of you know some of the different categories, mention uh, a couple things that maybe caught your interest when they uh, when they crossed your sure. desk. Um, you know, two films in the uh, in the in the documentary uh, space that that uh, we're really excited about um, are arcades and love songs, uh, the Ballad of Walter Day. It's kind of a follow up to the King of Kong, which was very popular a number of years ago. Uh, it's telling a f- continuing story of of uh, this gentleman who featured heavily into that film uh, and his uh, his foray into uh, becoming a recording artist. Uh, the other big documentary that we're really excited about is Shift, the Ragbri documentary. Uh, obviously, it's it's been popular over the last year across the state. Uh, we're really excited about that. Um, Resurrecting Forest Grove from our, our friends, uh, uh, the Rundles of Fourth Wall Films, is another great uh, doc. Um, we have a lot of great student short films this year. Um, several films from Loris College Media Studies program. They always uh, they always turn out. Uh, in full force. Um, we've got um, a film from uh, a student at the NYU Tisch School of the Arts, Kaylin Busby, submitted Layaway. That's a really excellent film. We've got a high school film that's a lightsaber battle that makes, uh, the, that when we saw it, it was like, this is a high school student. The, the effects are incredible. 
So those are those are those are some of those. We've got features. We've got Max Allen Collins' uh, latest feature, Blue Christmas. Uh, we have Crimson Archer, which is a GI Joe fan film. And and uh, initially you might think, oh, fan, fan film. Why is that in a festival? It's actually very very well made it's it's quite quite something so gi joe so is this with live actors or uh-huh. is it stop motion with oh. the with the characters yeah no it's 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 live action nice. actors yeah it's wow. it's it's they they put some they put some work into it let's just say that yeah. uh, how many submissions do you usually get scott i've gotten around 100 i think the last couple of years okay yeah, i think so. it was 102 yeah. this year i think yeah. sounds right uh, pro- and I'm sure it's a tough job to winnow down to the ones that you're going to be able to use. Yep. Our judges have a, a big task in front of them each year. <clears throat> they usually watch somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 hours of, of films and then get it get it crammed into the time. They have kind of a tiered system of, well, here's how much time you got, what's going to fit in here. Right. In this, do, you, do you kind of do that by division? You know, here's our short films and we've got a total of, you mm-hmm. know... Yep. Three hours yep. or whatever. Take your take your award winners and then try and fill in as best you can from, <laughs> yeah. from time after that. Yeah. Uh, and it's tough because, you know, you get a lot of differences of opinion uh, in that conversation. Oh, I like this because of this. And, and in many ways you're comparing apples to oranges sometimes, even within the category, because how do you choose documentary about this subject versus documentary about this subject or, or narrative with different stories? So it all comes down to the quality of the execution and how well they told the story, how well they entertained the audience. Uh, so it's it's a big task every year. We thank them very much for doing it. Yeah, yeah that that that's a that's a big commitment. It is a big big ask. Yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, you have a chance to do a little question and answer with the uh, producers and directors of these films, but you also kind of have some other uh, panel discussions and education things for people interested in uh, uh, in learning more about film and how films are made. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, uh, what are those going to look like this year? Well, it's like we like to, uh, we have this group of people together with the film festival, with filmmakers and the audience, so it's nice to have a conversation, and there's been a couple organized this year. Uh, the first is a documentary a documentarian panel Uh, for folks that are interested in in doing that or learning more about how to do that uh, with folks who have have produced several of those. How you kind of gather your pieces, how you approach that type of project. Uh, We've got the the Resurrecting Forest Grove as well as a couple of others that are coming uh, to talk about their process and how they they do those things. And we also have a a student discussion on Sunday as well. Yep, student discussion where it's kind of going to be kind of an open forum for students to ask uh, you know, if they're high school students, ask college students, you know, how did you approach going to film school or did you go to film school? And for college students to ask professionals, what did you do when you got out of film school or how do you find a job or how do you make connections? Just these things that that, you know, as a as I recall, as a film student, things that I didn't know. I didn't know that you couldn't just send a resume to Warner Brothers and get a job. (laughs) You know, these are things that, that, uh, you know, the questions that come up often with, with student filmmakers. And we thought, what, what better, what better way to to address some of those, those questions than just have a a nice, you know, round robin talk, you know, discussion of, you know, what are, what are the questions? What, what, what can you expect out of your career? How can you grow your career? Things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, and less people think that, you know, starting your film career in Iowa and submitting a film to the Cedar Rapids Film Festival is, you know, is no way to get started in the biz. You have a pretty good track record of some serious Hollywood talent that has, that kind of got their start at this festival. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, well, the, the biggest name, I think, probably is Scott Beck and Brian Woods, uh, who came through, did a, a Quiet Place, which is now on its second sequel uh, <laughs> releasing here soon uh, as well as uh, uh, several other uh, films and, and some some kind of behind the scenes things too we had people who did uh, uh, production assistant on the Batman begins uh, lots of things it might be kind of deep in the credits but certainly they they started in this area and then moved on to bigger things. So sent that resume to Warner Brothers and, uh, and, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Sure. and then add another ten years of experience. Right. But, but yeah, it's a great opportunity. You know, festivals like this to get uh, get kind of that exposure to that environment. And how does this work? Uh, once you start talking to some of these folks, well, I could probably do that. You know, I might be able to make a film on my own, or I I'd certainly come and help with your film. Wouldn't that be uh, something I could do? So if you're interested in the industry or being part of a film. Come and see what's there. See if the filmmaker happens to be there for that showing. 
ask them questions, you know, take them out in the lobby. Hey, I'm interested in helping you out. Do you have any slot for me? Uh, certainly on student, student Cinema Sunday on the Sunday here, come to the discussion on Sunday afternoon. Even if you were, you know, an adult student who's thinking about getting into film, come and, and listen to that discussion and see what kind of wisdom you can gain from folks who've already been through it. Because as Eric said, there isn't really a roadmap. I mean, there's, oh, you can go to film school, okay, but plenty of people don't take that route, and there's lots of other ways you can do it. So it's kind of like uh, stand-up comedy in that way. If there's no real path, it's just get out there and do it uh, and, and kind of learn from others as you go. Mm -hmm. It's the Cedar Rapids Independent Film Festival, April 5th through the 7th, Collins Road Theaters. A uh, lot of films. Uh, if uh, you do have to pick and choose, I'm sure that there are, there's the list and kind of the synopses of, uh, of the films are on your website. Mm -hmm. Yep, the, all the synopses are there. The schedule is there. Um, you'll learn about the films. You'll learn about their Iowa connection, which, of course, is the hallmark of our festival. Is right. That, that, is we did, we didn't mention that, that every film, you know, had to be considered has to have an Iowa connection of some sort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and then uh, if people people can buy tickets in advance, how does that, how does that work session wise? When you purchase your ticket, what's that? Well, so, how much is that? How much of the fest is that good for? Well, we, we've carved it up in a way that it's accessible to everybody. So you've got, uh, there's the three days you can buy uh, each of the uh, sessions, which is about a three, three and a half hour chunk. Uh, those are about $10 ahead of time and I think a little bit more uh, at the door. You can buy a full event pass, which if you're the real in for the weekend, that's the good deal. Uh, those are uh, $35. And then uh, that gets you into everything, uh, including the award show. You can find all the ticket information at crifm.org and there's a link there to Collins Road Theaters to make the purchase, and they're available now. Uh, so certainly you can buy them ahead of time. But if you aren't able to make a decision yet, you can buy them at the door as well. All right. Uh, excellent. Well, it's uh, always uh, always a pleasure to hear how the film festival has grown and continues to be uh, such a success and uh, benefit to our community and the film community. I appreciate you coming in today. Thanks, Thanks so much for having Thanks us. very much. Again, CR, tell me the website again, CRIFM. Scott. CRIFM.org. Uh, Cedar Rapids Independent Film Festival. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1030. Watch the video on YouTube or Facebook. That's right, our own little, tiny, little short movie. Uh, or subscribe to the podcast at kcck.org slash culture. Our producer is Lydia Kilgore. I'm Dennis Green. I'll talk to you later.